Getting started as a cinematographer or a media professional, getting paid for it feels impossible, but it's not. And I wanna share with you guys five things that I've been doing to get work. Yo guys, welcome back to my epic backyard. Actually, it's just the alley courtyard thing next to my aunt and uncle's place that I'm living at. But it's really cool. My name is Ted Willis and I've been doing YouTube stuff for a couple years now, but I've been actually working as a cinematographer and editor and video person for almost eight years now, which is crazy. And for a while I was working on stuff like this, girly stuff like this. <laughs> It was fun, but I wanted to travel, I wanted to do some documentary stuff, so I left, started a YouTube channel. It's been awesome, doesn't quite pay all the bills. I moved to New York and I'm trying to get work here. So for all the people that want to get into video and figure out how to make a living out of it, I've got five things that I've been doing that are working for me that I want to share with you guys. Step number one is say yes. Say yes to everything because saying yes opens doors while saying no closes them. There's a time and place to say no. Usually when your plate's so full, you've got other more important jobs, you've got to make space for family, great. But if you're just starting off, you're probably younger, you probably have the capacity, so just say yes to everything, lay pride aside. Even for me. I've been working as a cinematographer and a video person in the industry for several years, but I'm new to the city. I need to meet people. I'm not getting a ton of gigs right away. So when I was asked if I could volunteer to photograph an event, I said yes, because it doesn't matter that I'm not an event photographer. It doesn't matter that I don't have a perfect camera for it. So I asked to borrow my friend's camera. See, you do what it takes, even if it means rocking a beautiful blue camera strap to an event. Back to what I was saying. I really don't know what's gonna happen at this event. I could meet some really cool documentary filmmakers, it is a documentary event, or it could turn into nothing. But regardless, you gotta say yes. The second really important thing to be doing is be working on passion projects in your spare time. First, it'll make you better at what you're doing, and second, it'll actually give you something to talk about when people ask, hey, what are you working on? If your response is, oh, I'm not working on anything, that's a conversation ender and no one wants to work with someone who doesn't work on anything. All right, the third thing is super important, but kind of hard and it's networking. Honestly, this is true for any industry. It's all about who you know. So how do you meet people if you just moved to a city? I'll get super practical. First, you ask the people that you're already friends with. Hey, do you know anyone in this city that's working in this industry? For me, it's asking friends, hey, do you know anyone that's doing documentary stuff in New York City or doing any sort of production stuff? So start with the people you know and ask them to introduce you to other people that you should know. Then you wanna start hitting up the people you haven't met before. That's obviously the most challenging. You can go to networking events and those are okay. You can also cold email people. Most people aren't gonna respond, but some people will. If there's somebody that you really wanna connect with, but you don't have a personal introduction and it might be a long shot, but there's something specific that you can offer, why not make a video pitch? I got to connect with Lou from Beam that way. We have some breaking news just in. It's that nobody reads cover letters ever. So, I want to apply for a job at Beam News. I'm making this video. And I went in and had an interview with them. Of course, a week after that, Beam shut down. But I made a video for the Fung Brothers and I've been shooting for them. That's been super fun, really cool. And then, you know, I've made this video for Casey. So Casey, let me prove it to you. For one month, I will help you launch into this new chapter with no compensation. Haven't heard anything. So, you know, not 100% of the time will it work, but if you make videos, it's a great way to use that skill, show off what you can do, and introduce yourself all at the same time. The fourth thing really isn't sexy at all, it's just good old-fashioned applying for jobs, and you should be doing it while you're networking. 
Because ultimately, if someone knows the person posting a job, they're gonna get it before you, but it doesn't hurt to actually be applying for jobs while you're doing it. So yeah, there's the online and digital publications that hire video staff, but don't be afraid of places like Craigslist, and then there's Production Hub, Mandy.com, a bunch of different places that post production jobs. Even hitting up a staffing firm that specializes in production might be able to get you some work. All right, last thing is to follow up. That really brings everything together because you have to keep on it. You have to stay at the front of people's minds, otherwise they're gonna forget about you and that next opportunity, when it pops up, will go to somebody else. So whether that's following up with people that you met at a networking event or following up with someone that you interviewed with for a job, shoot them an email. Like at least once a month, reconnect with people, see how things are going, offer them something you learned, let them know where you're at. And a great way to keep track of all these people you're meeting is using a CRM. CRM stands for Client Relationship Manager, something that salespeople use to keep track of sales. It kind of feels a little slimy, but honestly, it's just a tool to help you remember, oh, hey, I need to email this person and it makes it much less overwhelming. So instead of losing track after you've met 20 people, you can keep on reconnecting with 50, 100, 150 folks. Super helpful. Basically, trying to get a job in media is really hard in New York City, but elsewhere also. So. I just wanted to let you in on what it's been like for me and hopefully you guys can learn from some of the things that I've been learning and messing up along the way. But I just wanna encourage you, if you're chasing your dream, keep getting after it. It's not gonna happen overnight. It's not happening overnight with me, but hopefully something will happen soon and I just want to encourage you guys to stick with it and we can encourage each other. So part of that encouragement is I'm giving away one of those adventure photography backpacks from last week's video. If you want one of them, go on over to Twitter, follow me at Ted Willis and tweet at me what your passion is that you're chasing after and you could win one of the backpacks that I talked about. And then I'm going to give another one away in next week's video. So make sure you are subscribed with notifications on and I'll tell you how you can win one at the end next week. Now get out there and inspire some good.